Hello everybody, Sam here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about why children CRISPR companies involved in genome editing should consider, consider adopting some sort of diagnostics technology in their companies. I wanna talk about all of that in this video, but before we do that, before we jump into this video, do subscribe, do like this video, really does help the channel. So, I was going through this article on uh, Global uh, Newswire, Business Wire, whatever you call it, um, and they were talking about the CRISPR technology market, the trends, what's going on. They sort of gave some guidance in the upcoming five years. I totally disagree with this type of guidance. I'm not going to go over it, but they suspect that it's going to reach like $6.4 billion only by 2027, the CRISPR technology market, which I completely disagree with. But that's another topic for another day. But they did go ahead and mention some details about Sherlock Biosciences, right? And it just happens that in my channel, we've never covered Sherlock Bio Biosciences. And I taught myself this could be a perfect type of video for today on a beautiful Saturday. So that's exactly what we're going to do, right? So uh, this article talks about how in May 2020, which obviously some of you may know uh, or may have forgotten, but... This was about less than two months after the pandemic became, began that it actually received the EUA, so Emergency Use Authorization from the US FDA group for its Sherlock CRISPR SARS-CoV-2 kit, which is used to detect a virus that causes the, pan the pandemic, right, the, the virus. The Sherlock CRISPR COVID kit, kit could provide results in approximately one hour, a time frame that was much lower than other tests available in the market at that time. So obviously they received that, that obviously bought, brought them to the news. We haven't really heard too much about this company so far since then, but I did want to go, you know, really briefly about, you know, their website, what they do. And obviously here, this company here, is uh, just appointed, you know, a CDO here just like two weeks ago. So lots of changes. They raised eighty million dollars in Series B. Uh, I think they raised up to like hundred eleven or hundred ten million up to date. If you pull a multiple of like four to five X, maybe add a premium to that. You're looking at maybe a market cap of a public uh, market value cap if they ever went public. Obviously, probably around six hundred to seven hundred billion dollars. Uh, market cap, which is amazing for a company that's obviously this early. I mean, they just hired, uh, you know, a president and a CEO in, you know, less than a year ago. So clearly things are changing in this company. It is new. It's acting as a startup. It may be a potential unicorn company. Sort of what we're seeing with Mammoth Biosciences that we expect will be going IPO at some point this year. Uh, but who knows, right? And I sort of got myself thinking, you know, why haven't current CRISPR companies in the genome editing space like CRISPR Therapeutics, NTLA, Caribou Biosense, Beam Therapeutics, why wouldn't they acquire some sort of these companies, right? And I just, you know, I like I should have known this, but actually, actually Mammoth Biosciences competition obviously is Sherlock Biosciences, right? And was it was founded by Feng Z Dr. Zhang, right? Which obviously is a rival of Dr. Downer. And just to go back here, what they do um, as a platform, Sherlock is not editing any genes. They're really, really just in CRISPR diagnostics, basically using CRISPR as technology to basically detect any variation of a disease of a virus and so on in your genes. And they just want to master that, and which I find very noble. I've always said that. I've always said that, but I... I'm I'm so surprised that not these not many companies have adopted the Mammoth Biosciences uh, approach, right? Even Sherlock is not doing that. Where Mammoth is saying, "Look, we're gonna diagnose diagnose those these viruses, the diseases through our technology using CRISPR technology, but we also are going to CRISPR use CRISPR Cas specific Cas uh, nuclease cuts to basically edit genes, right?" And none of these companies are doing this. Sherlock obviously is not doing that. They're just in the diagnostic space. Maybe they expand that. Uh, Beam Therapeutics is not doing that. Uh, CRISPR Therapeutics is not doing that. NTLA is not doing that. Caribou Biosense is not doing that. So I think there's a quite a fitting market opportunity here for all these companies, right? And obviously, you know, you're never going to see NTLA buy 
by flat out uh, Sherlock Biosciences because of the sheer fact that Sherlock is launched by Dr. Zhang. And obviously you have the whole uh, Broad Institute versus the West and so on, which I'm not going to go into. But I truly believe this could be an opportunity, right? This could be an opportunity for CRISPR companies to sort of adopt some sort of technology that allows them to diagnose diseases, viruses, or whatever they want, right? Sort of license that technology. I, I, I think the great, great analogy of this type of, you know, this type of approach, and I understand there are costs, expenditures. It's not just as easy as saying, okay, I'm just going to spin out like some sort of technology for a diagnostic. And you also want to remain focused to your goal. I totally understand that. But as you're growing uh, your company, as you're getting more mature, as you are raising more funds to the public markets. I mean, CRISPR Therapeutics has almost $2.5 billion in cash. I mean, use some of that cash to leverage this type of technology, introduce a new segment, right? And the perfect, perfect, perfect um, example I have for you guys is Tesla, right? Tesla, you know, obviously started out as an electrical vehicles company, clearly doing a lot more than just electrical vehicles. I mean, you know, you look at Apple, right? Apple, um, the smartphones and Apple, what are they doing with smartphones? They're not just selling your smartphones, right? They're, they're doing the iOS, which is the software in their smartphone, controlling that ecosystem. And of, of course, they're doing a lot more than that, like services, Apple TV Plus and so on. I mean, you have other players like Amazon, right? They're not just an e-commerce website, right? Where you can just buy and sell products, right? They're also a AWS platform, right? For cloud services, right? Um, obviously, Amazon Prime, a video, right, where they launch their own shows and so on. And then you have other companies like Microsoft, all these big companies, they've always branched out from whatever they're spe specialized in, right? And I find it really fitting. I, I really find it fitting for these CRISPR companies that edit genes to introduce diagnostics tools, right? Where you can sort of leverage that technology when you build these partnerships, you're like, look, you can do that, you can do this, you can edit genes and you have high specificity. Obviously, we're gonna license how the technology or revenues or royalties, which we've seen these partnerships, we've covered these types of partnerships in a recent video. If you guys remember, uh, check out that video in, my, in our video catalog, you'll see, you know, we went over all the current partnerships in the CRISPR landscape. But you can also leverage CRISPR diagnostics, right? And you can actually partner up with companies like Teladoc, right? And Vite, you can partner up with Come whole hospitals, right? You can even partner up with companies like BNGO, right? BNGO, which obviously are all about OPGM, OGM. You can, I, I really think there is an opportunity here um, for these CRISPR companies and you got to put that cash into play, right? Um, and I, I, I think this is, this is maybe just me rambling here, but I, I really think there's an opportunity here. Unfortunately, um, it just seems like these companies are not really moving fast. And I understand these things take time. There's, you know, there's approvals, there's delays, and it's not like the tech space where regulations are low, you know, healthcare specifically, you know, when we're talking about biology of humans, you know, this is, this is the most regulated space. I mean, period, right? I mean, there is no other space that comes even close to that, right? I think, you know, when you talk about, you know, editing human genomes, or you think about you know, injecting something in someone's body, or allowing someone to take a certain pill or a certain injection. I mean, this this goes beyond. When you talk about regulation, this is like the tier, the top tier of regulations, right? So I clearly understand why there are going to be. This is all going to take some time, but meanwhile, you can sort of leverage like little startups within your company, like CRISPR diagnostic tools where you can sort of leverage that and see where it goes, right? Sort of like the Google model. Um, hopefully we'll see that with these companies. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about CRISPR diagnostic being adopted by CRISPR companies involved with genome editing. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you found value and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Thank you.